items okay. thieves out there is like uh, actually it's like la the reason why I say you should come on Saturday is actually we had the Python user group meet up uh, last uh, just two days ago, like last Saturday where we try to bring in uh, Python developers to talk about interesting stuff so it's like uh, yeah I just I, I was presenting on uh, the perils of uh, web scraping but today I'm not going to talk about that because I'm going to talk something new I'm going to be about uh, Facebook app development so it's like uh, Recently, especially, it's like after, I know, it's like most of you know that uh, Facebook has been IPO, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure, right? Yes. And recently, did anybody notice it's like, uh, but it's like, it's, but it's like the whole Facebook IPO thing is very important because it's like, uh, it shows that uh, Facebook has reached one of the biggest, it's like has created the biggest social, it's like it's the biggest social network in the world. It's like, uh, I mean, just look at the stats. I mean, it's like uh, the, the, the recent trend is now going towards like social, local and mobile. It's like the social. It's like Facebook is being. It's, it's at one of the cross. Uh, it's like it's, it's really in the epicenter of the whole three trends that we are seeing right now in the startup scene. So it's like it's about social. It's trying to bring communities together. It's about local. As in, it's like how it's like if I want to look for restaurant recommendation, it's like I want to know whatever that is like nearby. It's like oh, what's the closest Thai restaurant that is around me? It's like that's it's like that's where the local comes in. But it's like you can't have these two without the mobile revolution. It's like without your, it's like with your phone, mobile phone. Uh, I'm sad to say that I'm using one of the dumb phones. <laughs> anyway, but it's like con just just consider the fact that it's like now if your mobile, it's like the mobile device is actually en en enabling you to check in. It's like get all the information on the fly. It's like getting recommendations. It's like if this, it's like oh, is there any promotions? Is there any good restaurants around? Is there any like um like the assholes to look out for. If, if, it's like if the waiter is, 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 is an asshole, you shouldn't be informed like immediately. And you can just probably just ping up your friends. It's like, oh, I'm going to this Thai restaurant. Anybody's joining? It's like kind of thing. It's like so you can see. It's like we're starting to converge into this slow mo. Uh, I call it slow mo. Uh, slow mo. Um, revolution. revolution. Yeah, that's the word. So it's like um, that. It's like. And Facebook is one of those interesting part where it's like they they are constantly copying other ideas from Foursquare, from like uh, MySpace and whatever, and they now have a uh, mobile app as well. It's like we are now seeing that Facebook is one of the forces that we should be paying our attention on. And after all, it's like you can't get wrong with 428 million daily active users, and this was like the statistics back in December 2011. So imagine what was the statistics right now, like five months right now. It's like try, try to make it, try to guess. It's like what, it's like how much, how many more users that is coming into Facebook itself. So it's like um, for context, it's like uh, the reason why I'm going to talk about it is because it's like uh, I I'm currently working with my valley and I'm working on the Facebook app, which essentially is a face is a trying to bring Facebook is like trying to bring reviews into Facebook fan pages. So after it's like I have been developing the app for like three and four, three or four months, and so it's like um, you'll notice that it was the Facebook API is very easy to use, but at the same time there's so many pitfalls that you'll find yourself stumbling through. So it's like it's more of a knowledge sharing. Uh, I'm not going to go really in depth into it because of the uh, time constraints. So it's like whatever questions is like you can uh, ask me during the panel or just ask me in Facebook, but. Uh, just consider this uh, as a 0 0.5 because it's like whatever that I'm presenting right now is only like one like one small portion of the Facebook API. Actually, there is a lot of stuff that a lot of integration stuff that interesting things that you can do within Facebook. So think of it as a uh, Facebook app development 101 uh, for now. It's like I may revisit the topic uh, in future uh, webcam talks. So keep in mind. So. This will be a three part. I'm going to present it in three parts. It's like uh, part one is like I'm um, giving you the compulsory overview of uh, the Facebook eco ecosystem. <coughs> so it's like if, it's pretty straightforward. If you just go to developers.facebook.com, it's like you can see that there's uh, three. Uh, it's like there's like the three main things in Facebook. It's like you, either you can integrate Facebook in your for your website. You can have your mobile apps that integrates well with Facebook, or you can build apps on top of Facebook. Uh, but for this one, it's like I'm not going to cover uh, mobile uh, just as of yet because it's like I haven't really uh, looked into a lot of mo uh, mobile stuff on Facebook. So it's like I'm just going to touch on the websites and the Facebook apps for now. Um, 
Yeah, it's like I, I will go into the mobile. It's like I, it, it's like there is plans to do a mobile version of my app. So it's like um, I will present more on, on this. I will show. I will give you more insights as well as as I develop. It's like just consider it to as to be continued. So just starting from basics. It's like let's start from the basic stuff. It's like we want to like if if you want Facebook integration with your website. It's like and especially if you are a freelancer. It's like oh, I want Facebook in my website. Uh, okay, what do you mean by that? But usually it's like when they say, when they want to say uh, they want Facebook in their website, it's usually it's like it's about uh, Facebook juices. It's like they want to bring Facebook, uh, they want to share their content on Facebook or they want to add like some of the Facebook, latest Facebook comments into the into their website and stuff. And so the, and they want to sort of like have some sort of interaction from Facebook into their website. So it's like, with this, it's like uh, Facebook actually provides you with a lot of like pre-built uh, plugins. Uh, you can have it's like you have the like buttons, the share buttons, the subscribe, send buttons, the comments, activity feeds. Uh, I mean, there's a load of widgets. I mean, you just look and you just go to the site and you can see that a like button is essentially is like uh, okay, if you have a website, it's like click here to like to my page kind of thing. So like you can have the like button, you can have the send button to say that. I have an interest. I have an interesting. It's like, uh, do you want to send this article to your friend? It's like, do you want to? It's like, you, you want to introduce that uh, interaction. You can have the subscribe button where people can subscribe to your website someday through Facebook and stuff. So it's like you can just go through the list. And this is one of the interesting part where it's like, uh, if you are a freelancer and if people ask you for that, you can actually charge for it. <laughs> and it's like it's so easy to do. It's like. It's almost like easy money for God's sake. It's like if you are not, it's like if you say that you can't do Facebook widgets, you are totally losing out like four digits on the table. <laughs> so yeah, it's like look into it. It's like this is the easiest way to get Facebook juices into your website. But uh, I'm not going to talk. It's like uh, I'm not going to focus about, about that. It's like uh, I'm going to more. It's like if you go a bit deeper, it's like now it's like okay, I have a web application or I have a website. And I do need accounts and logins and stuff, but I don't want to do my custom solution. I want users to be able to log in my website using Facebook or Twitter. It's like almost like Pinterest. Essentially, it's like you have the Facebook login through Facebook um, button over there, where you, after you log in, it's like you will create the account for you and everything. So it's almost like so it's like you, it's pretty. It's also one of those things that is uh, very straightforward. Oh, sorry. So it's like a. Um, what you'll do is actually it's like you will need to figure it's like for most web apps you can actually down it's like you can probably just get one of those plugins, Facebook uh, O of two plugins, and just pretty much plug it into it. And basically what it does is actually you will call an API. And once it's like once the user has like authorized your application through Facebook, actually it's like you will return um, the user account information to your web app. And you can you can just create your user accounts from there. You can just make it's like for this one. It's like you, you may need to reach out to your web developer, and uh, they will. And it's pretty straightforward. But it's like uh, that. Although that is like although this is it's, this I know, but it's like it's not. It's like um, I'm not going to go deep. It's like I'm going to go deeper into it. It's uh, the thing about the Facebook app itself. So it's like there. Some of you are not aware that actually it's like there's two types of web uh, Facebook app itself. It's like one is uh, uh, the page type app and one is the canvas app. Uh, if you want to imagine, it's like a canvas app that I usually do for done for games. It's like where it's like you go to apps.facebook.com slash triple town. This is a triple, it's one of the puzzle games that I like a lot. It's like uh, you, you it's like um, you have your it's like this is where it's like usually the games and everything was hosted. So it's like if you if you want the games to be hosted on. Uh, the way I would imagine it is essentially is like you will have your Flash application or your web application that hosts within the Facebook. Um, it's pretty much it's like it was embedded within the Facebook page itself. So it's like you have like apps.facebook.com slash triple town and it will redirect into uh, the triple town Flash game. Or you imagine it's like you probably have um, say a product, it, yeah, it's, it is an ice cream. So it's like, a, it's like if you have a copy, it's like you have, have it's like especially it's like when it comes to competitions or whatever, it's like a lot. You, you can see a lot of this. But another, it's like the second thing is that uh, Facebook pages. It's like uh, you can have application in your Facebook pages as well. I mean, it's like apart from the photos, the likes, the the, the the default Facebook, the default Facebook apps. Actually, you can develop your own apps over here. This is a quite cola where they have like uh, your stories. Essentially, it's like they allow 
users to post their own user stories about Coca Cola. It's like, what, how, it's like, how, it's like, post like cool, cute pictures of them holding Coca Cola cans or whatever, and um, stuff. So it's like, uh, if you, once you have a page tag app, it's like, when, it's like, this is Spotify, and, and this is like one of the interesting, like, uh, vanity applications that is like, the hot and not of uh, music genres. It's like, uh, do you want, to, do you like punk rock or do you like dubstep? Kind of thing. You can do like interesting, like small little vanity. It's like cute little apps that is like that has like will help you to build up your brand image and stuff. But it's, um, but as as I go on, it's like some people will probably it's like uh, what's the difference between the two? Because it's like both of them are actually web apps that was embedded within Facebook. So the best way I can say it is that uh, essentially it's like uh, this user voice. Uh, anybody knows uh, what user voice is? Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, so it's like uh, just a few of you. Uh, uh, Facebook user voice is a, uh, essentially a user, a customer support uh, web app that is like people can, it's like, you, it's like your company wants a customer support app, it's a like web app thingy where they can log in like um, bug requests or they want to do complaints or whatever. It's like, it's like uh, you, can, you, can, you can go to uservoice.com slash like uh, your company name and people can sort of log in into this and lock their complaints through there. Or like but this, feedback support. Yeah, feedback, support, and stuff. So it's like, the, they, it's like they allow you to, it's like the, in this case, it's like user, user voice is essentially bringing the, your company user voice, uh, user voice page and embed it into, like, say, Hootsuite's uh, web uh, page, uh, fan page, essentially. So essentially, it's like you can have the same app but you know which page is coming from, and you can customize. It's like it's essentially it's like, but it's like if you want to offer B two B apps, this is probably one of the uh, Facebook app you should look into because it's like uh, you can. It's like you will know which page does it come from, and you can pretty much customize. It's like um, different pages for this, like from the different fan pages. In this case, it's like if it comes, it's like if Coca Cola has a user voice page, it's like you will know that it comes from Coca Cola fan page, and it will redirect it to the Coca Cola. Uh, feedback loop, uh, the feedback page and whatever. And if it's from Hootsuite, it will, it will redirect to a Hootsuite uh, page tag thingy. So it, this is where the Facebook, the, the true power of Facebook lies actually. It's like as a developer and as well as people who are really into ideas, it's actually the Graph API. What, is, what Graph API allows you to do is essentially it's like if I have developer app, and the user is like uh, the user, the customers who are interacting with my app. It's like if they allow me permission to access what is like it will allow my app to really like dig through their put their private um, data with their permission like given. As in, as in, as in it's like you can know who, who is logging into your app. If they grant you permission, you can look through their. It's like you can pretty much like access their photo album. If they grant you a, that, like a different set of permission, they allow you to check what, what their likes and dislikes. If you, they, it's like you can, it's, it's, it's like whatever that um, information that was posted on Facebook itself, it's like you can access through and through so long the users grant you permission for it. So imagine the possibilities you can do with it. It's, like, it's almost like not only I can access their friend list, but I can access what their friends like. It's like what kind of interesting data can I use it? Can I come up with an uh, app that says, it's like, oh, I noticed that you like uh, these artists on Facebook. So it's like, I want to recommend you these other artists as well. Can you do that? Yes, you can. Do you want to do an uh, Instagram app that allows you to sort of like go into their Facebook? So it's pretty much like, I have a Facebook app that's pretty much like an Instagram for within Facebook itself. They say, oh, it's like, uh, can I access to your Facebook uh, photo album? So that I can do like cute filtery stuff and so, so like black and I can make it black and white or lomo-ish like stuff. It's like if they grant you the permission, you can do that. Or probably it's some sort of if you can come up with some sort of stalking app where you say, okay, who is like who in my friend list are actually single? It's like you can have a whole list of that. It's like just imagine the possibilities that data can actually give it to you. I mean, the basic stuff is like just the it's like just the basic stuff is a lot of information that you will be able to. Uh, harvest from the Facebook itself. It's like so long they grant you uh, permission. It's like the basic information was like the name, the gender, the locale, as in uh, what language do you speak, uh, what's the default language, the profile pictures, the friend, your friend list, who are you subscribed to, and who are your who subscribe who subscribe you back kind of thing. And if you ask for more permission, actually you can request permission to access for more more personal details. Like 
likes, what, what they like, what are their photo albums, what are their videos, what is like, whatever you can think of, it's like it's almost like whatever they post on Facebook, it's like you can access to it so long as like they trust your app to do so. Like. So that's it, it's like what what the Facebook app entails essentially is like what's happening under the hood. So the first is like I'm going through pretty much a step by step as like how a Facebook app is developed. So first thing is first thing first is like you have to register, register and uh, create and register your app uh, through the Facebook uh, developers uh, app thingy. Just go to developers.facebook.com/apps, and what you'll see is actually is like you have is like you can you can pretty much create your app over here. You can create your new app. Just click on it, and what you'll do is just fill in some some information. It's like where what what site was it on? What's your contact? Uh, where where your web app is being hosted and stuff. So it's like once you have created the app on Facebook, it's like it will give you two important pieces of information. Uh, one of them is the app ID. The other one is the app secret. Uh, with these two, it's like because it's, it's essentially it's the your secret password thingy, where they know Facebook will know that oh, it's your app that actually requests this information. It's not from some other boogie town apps that's trying to hijack your stuff. Did you have blacked out? Yes, <laughs> conveniently. So once you pretty much it's like once and after that it's like all you need to say is that uh, what kind of integration you want. It's like do you want just the user authentication of the website? You just put it under website. Do you want to create a web page tab app? You can have it here. You just specify what's the name, what's the URL that it should access to in your in your iframe, the image, the stuff. Uh, apps on Facebook, as in it's like the canvas. Essentially, there was canvas apps. And whatever mobile apps that's going on here, you just say that what you want is like is basically you can register. Uh, you can as you can notice over here, you can register more than one app. So it's like you don't have you. So it's like you can just create one, how many apps whatever you want. Essentially, it's like so that if you want to create one for testing, one for whatever, uh, you can create more than one. No worries. You can actually put local host to that. Oh yeah, it's like uh, you, uh, for testing purposes, you can have uh, you can have it under local host. Uh, actually, Facebook doesn't restrict you. Just make sure. But it's like if you put it on local host, it's like it's for, for development purposes. Where you go into Facebook, you will just you will just go. You will pretty much you only you can see the page that was posted on your local local host. So once you register, once you created your app on Facebook, the second thing is, is the second step is to write your app itself. Uh, this is the actually this is actually the easy part. Uh, I hope nobody will get this joke. <laughs> anyway, it's like the, this. The, this is the easy part because it's like a, what as previously said, it's like a Facebook app is essentially a web app itself. So it's like you can, it's like if you have web developers who are able to do uh, web apps, they can do Facebook apps easily. And all they need to know is just extra information on how do you interact with Facebook itself. And after all, it's just a web app. It's like a, it's, just, it's like so long. It's like you just. Uh, Facebook does provide you with uh, API wrappers. It's like uh, they have it. They have one for JavaScript, one for PHP. I think they, I think for Ruby and Python is uh, third-party libraries that you can look into. Uh, you can you can reach me, reach out to me if you want more information. And the thing about it is like uh, then it's like that's the that, then that that should really get your brains cranking because it's like now you have it's like I just told you that Facebook opens up a whole treasure trove of private data. How do you make it social? Actually, it's like because it's like after all, you have, once you you they put, authorize your app, you said you can access to their their private information. So it's like just imagine the possibilities. It's as in you can you know who are their friends. Could you do it's like for games? It's like leaderboards are pretty much like standard. It's like pretty much known. You can do like a uh, gifting stuff. It's like oh, I have virtual goods. I want to give it to somebody else. Or maybe it's like oh I noticed that you have it's like you like uh, these companies would you it's like do you want rec recommendations for other companies that you are interested in? Or you can probably just ask it's like uh, we noticed that uh, these photo albums was like this is public it's like uh, do you want to make them private? It's like actually it's like there's a lot of things that you can do and stuff. So it's like or you just from or even your I can say import whatever photo album into your app and it's like just like upload it to your app itself. It's like there's a lot of interactions that can go on. It's like you can do a lot of interesting mashups and stuff. It's like this should really it's like if you are a business developer, it's like a the business biz dev guy, it's like this should give you it's like you can really crank out a lot of different ideas and make it like make interest really interesting web apps. I mean 
after all, it's like currently people are still doing really boring web apps right now. I mean, Spotify is just like scratching just the initial itch kind of thing. And once you have your app up, it's like the second thing is to test your app. I mean, you don't want to go public and people starting to notice that, oh, there's bugs and I can sort of like crack into your web, your web server and steal credit card in details. You don't want that to happen. You need to make sure that people test your app properly. And this is, this is where, uh, how you can do it. You just enable sam sandbox mode. Uh, with sandbox mode on, it's only you, uh, the developers who are, you, you, have, you have assigned to, uh, associated to, to with your app, and testers who can really access to your app itself. And it's not open to general public, so it's like when people go to your app, which is sandbox, it's like you'll be redirected to a blank page, to a, the default Facebook homepage itself. And they would just silently like, ignore it. And once you, it's like, when, and it's like over here, you can just specify who are your administrators. It's like you can go to uh, your app, your app itself. You can go click on roles. You can specify who are your developers. The developers is like uh, essentially developers is like people who are developing for your app. That's pretty much. Uh, and here is where you specify your testers. It's like you just add testers over here. It's like uh, with this, it's like you pretty much just ask a friend, oh, can you just test my Facebook app and see whether is it working or not? Um, whether do you want to bribe them or do you want to just like plead them or whatever? It's like this is what they're going. It's like this basically is like once you get their permission, actually, it's like you just add them in, and it's like after you add them in, it's like they can access to your web app and really test it out. And uh, the sec and this and this this is the portion where it's interesting because it's like uh, for developers, it's like sometimes it's like we find like really manual testing is kind of boring kind of thing. It's like testing for UX, yes, you need human testers for that. But for like uh, really like really fighting for bugs and stuff, for, as developers, we need to test on really crazy test case, edge cases and stuff. It's like so. It's like uh, and you don't want like uh, people just like manually keying data. Like uh, it's kind of it's, honestly, it's very boring stuff. It's like in this case, it's like uh, you can create test users. Essentially, it's like uh, you can automate. It's like you can create test users, which you can auto create unit tests. And with this process, you can really do like uh, interesting unit tests and really like automate the whole testing process with mock Facebook user tester, testing users. And uh, actually, it's like you don't have to add it from here. It's like actually Facebook provides you an API where you can just call an API to create mock test users. So it's like you can create like 1,000 test users and you want to do concurrent testing, load testing on your Facebook app, you can do that. So really look into it if you are a developer and stuff. And after with all the testing, you pound it, you stress test it and everything, and you're feeling confident, that's when you actually starts to disable your sandbox mode and make it public and it's out in the wild and people can actually use your app. And just make sure you launch and this is when you, the marketing stuff goes in where it's just, uh, for one thing, Facebook doesn't have uh, some, some sort of like, for <coughs> Apple there's the app store for your Android, you have your Android uh, stores and it's like Google Play or Android stores as well, but it's like for Facebook, it's like there's no central directory for Facebook app, so it's like you can re you have to do your marketing of that part. Uh, they are trying to ramp up their effort in doing a Facebook app center where they publicize mobile apps for now, but, uh, but really it's like for this one, it's like you have to do your own launching and everything, just push it out to your mailing list and everything. I think with Facebook apps, they'll also make it like you can pay for an app. <coughs> uh, actually, you can actually. It's like uh, you can do that. Uh, I I will go through the details uh, later. But uh, if you need resources, it's like uh, the honestly the two only best resources I can like it's like the go to place is definitely Facebook itself. Go to developers.facebook.com and uh, check out their blog. Actually, it's like especially the look for developer spotlight post where they highlight. Uh, Facebook apps, they are really successful or they think that it was like really innovative in using their Facebook platform. If you want to look for ideas, just uh, go to their blog, look for developer spotlight and just like, just look for interesting stuff.